This rose bush is looking pretty good, right? But the one right next to it is looking really bad. The number one question we get, my plants are dying, or they're not even growing, or they're not performing, they're not fruiting. And there's so many factors that affect your overall plant's health. Today, I'm just gonna share with you a handful of tips that are gonna help get all of your plants off to an excellent start, if it's something you're newly planted, or for those that are established, to get them invigorated and performing at their best from year to year. In today's lesson, we're gonna demonstrate these five tips on mint, tomatoes, citrus, apples, and so much more. Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Gangs, where we grow cool plants and authors saving the world with the home garden. And my helpful tip number one is dead heading. And that's one of the biggest differences between these plants on my right and left. One being green, flowering and, and performing at its best. The one on the left is suffering and fading away. And one of the primary differences between the two is because the one on the left has not been deadheaded. This here is a lesson I wanted to teach several weeks ago and I've been just watching this rose continuously fade and I'm excited to now share with you what it looks like today and what it's going to quickly become by these simple tips. The primary one is deadheading and what deadheading is is removing the spent flowers unless you're for whatever reason collecting the seeds or using the rose hips. Um, the fact that this rose plant is supporting too many developed fruits which are those rose hips on the plant that is actually consuming a lot of the plant's energy all the fertilizer all the nutrients all the water and all these resources are going to creating fruit and when all we really want with these roses that we're using as a hedge in our front yard is for the color and if you want more color you got to remove those rose hips which are developing seeds and that again is taking up a lot of resources from the plants um, to develop those fruits. So check out all of these rose hips, as you can see here. My helpful tip number two is also pruning. When it comes to taking care of your plants, it's an excellent practice to prune all plants by at least 10% throughout the year. For some of your fruit trees on your property, you may be pruning by as much as 50 to 75% every year, such as for your apricots and fig trees. But what I want to explain here is that your plant, I'm a, uh, the best artist but here's the plant that's above ground and now here's the root system that's below the ground you're going to want to make sure that the above ground structure is smaller than the below low ground supporting root system this should be larger if the above ground structure is larger than the anchoring root system then you're going to start running into problems with your plants as these roots can no longer adequately support the above ground structure one for stability during wind rain storm but more importantly for the transfer of nutrients and minerals and water coming from the ground to support a beautiful you know healthy structure above the ground so you'll notice that while i'm deadheading i'm also pruning back into the structure some and that again is going to invigorate and actually add vigor to the overall plant structure this already is gonna get the plant off to a much better start. This is actually two helpful tips so far. We talked about deadheading and we've also done pruning. Let me actually share with you some other plants that we're doing deadheading or even fruit removing to help invigorate the plant. Check this out. So another example of deadheading, here's our daisy. Unless again, we're trying to collect the seeds, we'd allow the flowers to dry on to the plant and within it, check out all of these seeds which are basically gonna be the next generation for next year. If you wanna have some more flowers instead of it looking like this dead specimen here, then you're gonna to wanna to remove all of the spent flowers. And now instead of making seeds, this plant is gonna give us some more flowers to enjoy for the rest of the year. It already is starting to look better. This here is another beautiful rose that we have in bloom. It's a climbing rose variety. And as you can see, we've got several of the vines attached to the structure here behind me. 
So going back to that principle where we want an above ground structure that's smaller than the root system, feel free to prune these straggling branches that are crossing your path. And here we are just pruning this back. Told you we're gonna cover a lot of plants. Here we are with our twin king palm, palm tree. And again, part of invigorating your plants is pruning. By removing the dying and diseased branches, you're gonna get some more leaves coming off the top a lot sooner than later by pruning the plant. This actually, just by pruning, invigorates your plant structure. Something you can do to give your pair of palms a better chance at equal light is by pulling them apart. And just check out how aesthetically more pleasing this angle is also offering to your landscape as well. So we taught this lesson several months ago where we use the rope supported by a hose to help distribute the stress on the plant. And we simply moved it at about a, a rate of about an inch or two per month, kind of like braces. You don't want to do it all at once, but you simply start pulling in the direction you want until we achieve the goal of about a 45 degree angle. And within a matter of months, the direction of the palm starts correcting itself going up towards the light and now it's in its own space and not competing for the same light. And again, it just adds just another dimension to the landscape that's just absolutely amazing. And check out this footage from the beginning when we started pulling and training this into position. And it's a practice that's ideally performed at a very early stage of the palm's growth. You're typically within the first few years of the plant's life. So in this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to pull your palms apart for a decorative open structure compared to other palms that are on my property where the two trunks are competing for the same light space. Step one, soak the root ball. Step two is whether you decide to use a rope or in this case, I'm just using simple twine as this tree trunk is still young enough, I should be able to control it using twine, but I'm being careful to also protect the tree trunk using, we've had some old hose on our property and we're using this hose to better guard the tree trunk and the underlying cambium tissues from getting damaged by the twine constricting the flow and the movement of waters and minerals up and down the trunk. So we're simply gonna adjust the hose to lean against the tree trunk and the twine is gonna run through the hose. We've now got a stake in position alongside the tree trunk as we then try to adjust getting this tree trunk closer to the stake. The goal is we're trying to get this tree trunk at a 45 degree angle while we allow the companion trunk to grow completely vertical. The goal, just like braces, is not to achieve overnight results. The goal is to take your time and try to get a few inches into the desired direction and adjust and tighten it every about four to eight weeks. And so this has already been adjusted twice and together we're gonna to be doing this third adjustment. So I know we've staked a lot of fruit trees in the past, but this is an example of also staking palm trees in the desired directions in which you want it to grow. Thanks again for watching and wishing you all happy gardening. Under the topic of deadheading, you also need to defruit your ripe fruit. This lemon tree still has about a hundred lemons on it. It's a Eureka lemon. And you gotta make sure that when the fruit get ripe, that you harvest them. By harvesting the fruit, you lighten the load on the plant, you reduce the stresses, and the plant will thank you. All of these younger green fruit will develop larger, more tastier. And again, just overall, the plant's gonna be a lot healthier as it's not wasting energy on ripe fruit. Do not allow your fruit to rot on the tree. This here is just gonna attract more pests and disease. And again, it's just gonna hurt your tree, not help it. Get this away from your plants. By picking your tomatoes, your plants will give you more. If you allow them to just mature on the vine, it's gonna stop flowering. And without flowers, there goes your future fruit. By harvesting your ripe fruit, the tree's gonna thank you so it doesn't have to support ripe fruit plus developing fruit. Now these guys get all the resources. This here is a multi-grafted four-in-one citrus tree basically supporting kumquats and over here Mexican limes. Just behind that is the ponderosa, which is one of the most largest giant lemons. And behind that is the Lisbon lemon. 
Over here is where together again on the Ivory Organics YouTube channel earlier this year, we did an approach graft. Again, Ponderosa over here, Mexican lime over here on the um, Lisbon lemon rootstock. And over here, you can see there's Lisbon lemon sucker growth that we need to remove. And if you were to allow to keep the sucker growth happening, the plant may choose itself over your grafted varieties, creating dieback down this grafted branch and basically supporting the sucker growth instead. By removing the sucker growth, this entire branch is dedicated to supporting these two branches, which will soon, and maybe sooner than later, I don't know if you can see, there's some Mexican limes over here. We do not want it to go into fruiting mode. We want it to still continue growing for at least the first year or two until it then goes into the flower and fruit stage. So these here are a couple of our pruned Floyd Zager hybrid genetic fruit trees. This one here in front is the Pluot and behind it is a Pluary. Pluot is a cross between a plum and an apricot, Pluary, plum and cherry. And as you can see, we pruned the surfaces. We then whitewashed it to protect the underlying tree trunk from damaging first, second, and even third degree summer sunburn damage. When we remove the canopy of the tree, there's gonna to be too much light coming to the underlying tree trunk and lower branches, resulting in underlying sunburn damage. So instead of the tree focusing on growing, flowering, and fruiting, it's gonna be repairing sunburn damage. This one here was painted using the Ivor Organics 3 one Plant Guard color brown. I just wanna show you the differences in color. This one over here, Ivor Organic 3-in-1, color white. And just check out all of this new growth, this flush of brand new growth, pushing out several feet of new growth that will then harden and be in next year's flowers and ultimately fruit. So this here is a collection of three of our Meyer lemons on standard rootstock that we've been harvesting about 100 and 110 pounds of citrus off of these three trees every single year. And as you can see, this here is a walkway and we're continuously throughout the year pruning any branches that are growing into the walkway, like so. And notice that I'm not using my shears. We're carefully pruning those branches individually. We're trying to increase maximum light exposure that will ultimately support your fruit and flowers and light penetration. You wouldn't want to use your shear pruners as that'll create a very tight and shaded structure that will not result in maximum fruit production. For those of you growing mint, you might be experiencing something like this too. Your mint's gone into bolt, it's now seeding, it's turning yellow, it's not looking good. Bring it back to life with pruning. You're removing the above ground structure, leaving the root structure intact. You can even cut it in half and create two um, you know, additional mint plants. But take a look how I'm pruning this all the way down to the base. Check out all of this life that's hidden below. But again, it's not having a chance to perform because all of the seeds and all of these stems are sucking these resources into these poor performing branches. But by doing this, we're gonna invigorate the mint structure and we're gonna have a couple more seasons of delicious fresh mint. To see what I see down below, check out all of these new mint leaves. They're gonna have a chance to now grow and push out fresh mint that me and my family are gonna to get to enjoy. So we've talked about deadheading or defruiting your trees. We've talked about pruning and the value of strengthening the above ground structure relative to the below ground root structure. Helpful tip number three is checking for tunnel action below the plant. You may have gophers or moles or voles that may be creating tunnel action below your plant, basically diverting water and minerals away from your plant. That's another huge stress to the tree. And especially here we are in Southern California with water restrictions and every drop of water is a big deal to make sure that it's going to the benefit of the plant. And so what we're gonna do is basically collapse any tunnels that may be exposing that root structure, that root ball to too much air. And so what we're gonna do here is pull back on our wood chips so that we don't get the wood chips and some may find their way going below the topsoil but the goal is 
to keep the wood chips from again entering that topsoil and entering the ground as the wood chips will help rob the soil of nitrogen and also contribute to rot which we don't want happening and again we're going to talk about the importance of wood chips on the topsoil level only and what we're going to do is simply go in with our thumbs and add some pressure around the plant and sometimes if there's gophers and moles like check out over here i'm able to get about half my hand into this root ball over here as there may have been and likely there were some tunneling action going on around here check out the life over here where'd it go there it is check how happy the worms are here so evidence of, again of good quality soil are that the worms are feeding on the organic matter and enriching the soil around your plants Helpful tip number four, fertilize your plants. And a lot of you guys are skipping this step and very important. Imagine you're having to go through your day without any food. Plants similarly need to be fed. And the goal is just like us having our breakfast, lunch, and dinner is that you're feeding your plants at least in the spring and again in the summer and again in the fall. With the summer being the most important time of the year to feed your plants, as the light hours are peaking, the plant's metabolism is peaking growth rates, flower rate, fruit function, and all of that is peaking with 14 hours of warm daylight. By correcting any plant nutrient deficiencies in the winter, you're gonna result in maximum blooms come spring and ultimately fruit yields. Ivory Organics is proud to share the fact that Ivory Organic product, just this one bag, has all six plant macronutrients, which include nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, sulfur, and calcium. These are all nutrients that need to be in the soil in abundance in order for optimal plant health and performance. The Ivory Organic all-purpose fertilizers, there's the Super Blend, which has a higher NPK, and then the Premium Blend, which has a lower NPK. And what's so special about the Super Blend is it has plus azomite. And azomite is simply crushed volcanic rock to offer your plants a lot of the micronutrient nutrition as well. So now I'm not just gonna add a few tablespoons of product around the root ball of the plant. So we're just gonna get that in the top quarter inch of the topsoil, like so. And one of the things you're gonna notice on the back side of the fertilizer label, and it's really a whole story to be read here. If you take a look, you can see here this note where it says fertilizer plants and trees with this fertilizer or any other product may do best with the additional practice of composting and mulching. And now let me just explain to you how we're gonna do that as well. Over here, I've got some compost which is pretty much broken down, wood chips, some leaves. And what we're gonna do is simply add about a quarter of an inch layer of compost to the topsoil layer. This compost is gonna break down in the next 30 to 90 days. By feeding your plants organically, you're feeding the soil biology, which includes the worms and the beneficial bacteria and mycorrhiza, which are those um, mycorrhiza network um, fungal roots that can span about a thousand feet in your garden networking all of the plants helping with the distribution of moisture and nutrients between plants as well so an important function but if you're feeding your plants with synthetic products that are not organic what you can do is harm that organic biology that's in your soil and ultimately that's going to harm your plants as well within the garden so this here is a product that will help improve and help keep your plants super happy. So we've just added the fertilizer, we've added some compost, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some wood chips. And some of my favorite wood chips, and another question I get a ton of questions on is, what is the best type of wood chips? Some people say cedar because they're anti-termite and anti-beetle and so forth. But the answer is you want a diversity of wood chips. And ideally you're gonna collect it from a source that has various trees that are being ground up and basically you're reaping the benefits of the values of a whole bunch of different trees and not relying on just one. So we're just gonna put some wood chips around the topsoil as well. And we're doing about a one to three inch layer of wood chips around the plant. And what that's gonna do, and there's five benefits, at least five for your plants by adding a nice layer of wood chips around your plants. And that is one, it's going to help reduce the frequency of water. And especially in a drought condition, mulching is a huge way to help like between waterings, 
keeping that moisture in the soil and helping to benefit your plants. It's also gonna save you money as the cost of water is going up through this drought. You need, again, less water is gonna be a great thing. Secondly, it's also gonna suppress weeding and that's gonna help save you time. Additionally, in the summer by mulching, it's gonna keep the soil cooler and that's important too to having a happy, healthy plant. And in the winter, it's gonna help keep the soil warmer. So what it's doing is curbing weather extremes. And lastly, just as we did with the fertilizer and by adding some compost, is that the wood chips will break down, adding further nutrients and benefits to the soil, benefiting your plants and improving the whole soil biology as well. So now let's correct the mint. If you come in a little closer, you can see we're just gonna add a few tablespoons of fertilizer. For our potted plants, it's important, unlike our grounded plants that we only feed spring, summer, and fall with our granular fertilizer. With your potted plants, it's important to feed your plants a little less, but make sure you do it every single month. We're now adding some compost and we're going to get that into the topsoil. I can't wait to share the after results with you. And then just water and the miracle will begin again. Part of our tips number one and two when it comes to deadheading and pruning, this here is our purple splash rose, one of my favorite of the climbing roses. Again, these roses here are spent. We're gonna, and it's also kind of growing into our common space. So we're gonna pull this back like so. This branch too. If you come in a little closer here, check out all these rose hips. Again, this is sucking a lot of resources that would take away from having more color on this beautiful vine. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this educational lesson brought to you by Ivory Organics on how to make your dead plants come back to life or to keep your less than par plants thriving and going strong from year to year. Well, I hope you now enjoy some of the before and afters from our today's lesson. Check these out. And this here is our one week update on our mint. Just check that out. So this here is the one week update on our roses. Just check out all of this new growth and even the growing tips over here. You can see are pushing out some new buds. That'll be the future branches, buds and blooms. So this is again, the one week update on the daisy. What was white last week is dead this week. We're gonna prune it back like so. Just basically went about a quarter inch away from the next node down. And now we're rewarded with all of these flowers. By deadheading, you can see there's another generation of daisies on its way out all the way around. Be sure to continuously care for it, fertilize them every three months, and you'll be rewarded with a bouquet of flowers. So here we are with the one week update on our climbing rose. Again, continuously deadheading week after week. Don't allow this practice to slip and get away from you. And your plants will reward you with a ton of more blooms. So here we are now with the two week update. Just check out all these beautiful blooms. And the new buds. And don't forget, you gotta continuously deadhead those buds that are spent. And here's the two week update on our daisy. Let's check out all those beautiful blooms. Two weeks ago, we only had one flower that we deadheaded. This here is spent. And here's another one that's spent. And now we've got all of these blooms and all these new ones coming through. And this is our two week update on the roses. Just check out all of that new growth. Let's check out here in the front. You can see it's beginning to bud. And if you check out here in the back, here's the first flower to bloom and more buds behind it in just two short weeks. And check out this mint. In just two short weeks, we've got a ton of mint that we can harvest both fresh or we can actually harvest all of it again and set it out to dry to enjoy mint tea the rest of the year. Check this out.
If you found this lesson helpful, please share it with us in the comments below this video with what tip you found most helpful and beneficial to hopefully correcting any issues you've got growing on in your garden. And also, feel free to write us with what additional educational lessons you'd like to see being brought to you by the Ivory Organics YouTube channel. If you've liked this lesson, be sure to give us that like thumb. Also, share this with your gardening friends and family. For those of you that are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the push bell notification to stay connected with all of our educational lessons as soon as they become made available. And as always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening.